Okay, so let's end this section with uh, an example. So here we've got a function of two variables, z equals f of x and y, and the function is 1 over x squared plus y squared. Okay, we have to do two things. We have to sketch the function showing the contours, and then we have to find the directional derivative df by ds. Okay, for two cases, so for two different paths. Okay, so how do we sketch the function? Okay, and actually it's useful to think about the contours from the start here. Okay, so the answer to one. Uh, the contours are lines of constant z. Okay, so let's have our x, y, and z axes. x, y, and z. We want to find lines of constant z. Okay, so if, if z is 1 over x squared plus y squared, if this is a constant, then what does that mean? What have we got? We've got the equation of a circle. Okay, because this tells us that x squared plus y squared is a constant. Okay. So let's call this constant z0, okay, and then x squared plus y squared is 1 over z0. Let's call it z0 squared, okay, just to keep it easy. Okay, so for a value z0, the contour is a circle. So this is our circle, okay? If the value of z decreases, okay, from z0 to um, z0 over 2, say, then because it's 1 over the value of z, so z decreases, so the radius of the circle increases, okay? So as the value of z decreases, the radius of the circles that describe the contours increase. Okay, so your function looks something like this. Oops. We could have also seen this by just thinking of z equaling 1 over r squared. Okay, where r is the radius of the circle x squared plus y squared. Okay, and we could just draw the, the curve z versus r. Okay, and this is 1 over r squared. Okay, and it's symmetrical about the x, about the z-axis. Okay, so we just rotate this curve around the z-axis and we get this. All right, okay. So that's what the curve looks like. So let's now find df by ds, okay, for both these cases. So what is df by ds? It's the rate of change of our function and we know it's the, so it's the directional derivative. It's the gradient of f dotted with the tangent vector, t, okay? Um, the point in the direction that you're moving. So what do we need? We need to calculate the gradient of f, and we need to calculate the dot product of that with the tangent vector, t. So the tangent vector is given to us, so we just need the gradient of f and the dot product. Okay, so let's think about the gradient of f first. Okay, what is it? Is it a, a scalar, a vector, a number? What is it? It's, it's a vector. It's df by dx, df by dy. Okay, and do we have more? No, we don't because it's just a function of two variables. Okay, and df by dx is the partial derivative of this thing. Okay, so df by dx is the derivative of this holding y constant. Okay, so this equals minus 2x over x squared plus y squared, all squared. Okay, and similarly, df by dy is the derivative of this holding x constant. And you get the same thing, but x gets replaced with y. 
So this equals, so the two, the minus two over the x squared plus y squared, all squared is a common factor. So we've got minus two over x squared plus y squared, all squared. And then we've got a vector with components x and y. So this is the gradient of f. Okay, and what does it represent? It represents the direction in which the function changes fastest. Okay, so the direction here, so this thing is in the direction of minus x minus y. Okay, and is that consistent with our drawing? Um, if we look at the xy plane, this is a point x, y, and we're saying that the function changes fastest in a direction that points towards the origin. So this circus tent shape is such that no matter the value, the coordinate of x and y you choose, pointing towards the origin is the direction in which the function changes fastest. Okay, so this is, this is looking good. Okay, so we've got the gradient. Now we just have to take the dot product of this with respect to the tangent vector in both cases. So in case one, df by ds is equal to um, the gradient of f dotted with this thing. So it's minus two over x squared plus y squared, all squared. And then we've got the dot product of x, y with minus y, x. And what's the dot product of x, y with minus y, x? Okay, it's minus x, y plus x, y. So it's just zero. Okay, so we're saying that in the direction minus y, x, okay, which is what? It's this direction. This is the direction minus y, x. It's perpendicular to the radius, to the to the line from the point x, y to the origin. Okay, these are perpendicular. So is that consistent? Yes. So this direction is along the contour line. Okay, for any x and y. So for any x and y, this is taking us around the circle that is the contour line. Okay, and if we're going around the contour line, then by definition, z doesn't change. Okay, so df by ds is zero. Okay, and then the second one is df by ds uh, when the tangent vector is three, two. So we've got the gradient of f, it's minus two over x squared plus y squared, all squared. And then we've got the dot product of x, y with three, two. Okay, so this equals minus two. And then the dot product of x, y with three, two is three x plus two y, all divided by x squared plus y squared, all squared. Okay, so that's it.